will have, and they'll only have that one week after they return from vacation this week. How about that government shutdown? Inevitable? Will it happen? Let's ask David Drucker, staff writer for Roll Call. Hi, David. Hey, Jamie. Good Thanks to be here. Thanks for joining us this morning. Sure. Well, what are the chances, and if it happened, who wins and who loses? Great questions, and I think it's hard to know at this point. Of course, Congress is off next week. They'll be back in town on February 28th. I think that right now it's 50-50. That's what I see. There's a good chance that compromise is in the works, but neither Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid nor Speaker Boehner are going to, going to give away their negotiating points this early in the game. And so I think that it's too early to decide that they're completely in loggerheads and nothing is happening. And I wouldn't be surprised in the coming week if there are some low-level or high-level, I should say, back-channel talks, things that are being kept very quiet. On the other hand, they are going to truly have to come to a real compromise because the $100 billion in cuts that the House Republicans passed, the fact that the Speaker said he doesn't want any more short-term continuing resolutions to keep the government operating, uh, that is diametrically opposed to how Democrats and the Senate are looking at this. They don't want to cut spending anywhere near the level that Republicans do. And, and so I think that if we want to see how this thing shakes out, it's going to be can those two individuals and the people they represent on the Hill really come to some sort of middle ground? And, and finally, where's the president in all of this? Will he urge Democrats to meet Republicans halfway? And will he tell Republicans, if you'll come halfway, I'll get the members of my party there to meet you? These but are a David, lot of things we don't know yet. Like health care, his strategy has been put it out there without being specific about what the White House wants, what the president wants, and hope you get what you want as he did initially with health care. I want to ask you about those cuts because I think it's indisputable around America that people want spending cut. It's going to cost them money in the end. They get it that the deficit rests on their shoulders. The cuts that actually were passed by the House, are they reasonable? Are they rational? Are they enough or just the tip of the iceberg of what we need? Well, it depends on who you ask. You know, I was talking to a Republican member of Congress last week who is extremely committed to even more spending cuts than the House passed. So th this, is, this is a true believer. And yet this individual told me that everybody always tells him that they want spending cuts, but then when you get into the details, people start to hedge and pull back. And so I think it's a matter of how Republicans and Democrats sell this at home and whether or not they build support. Because you're right, everybody wants spending cuts. They get it. The deficit and the debt are too high. But when you actually go home and say, that means we're cutting this particular program, that means we're going to attack this particular entitlement program, people go, hold on a minute. I don't know if I like that one. What about this one? And so it becomes a lot more complicated. Is, I, I, I think is. that this is a, a multi-level process. First, we're dealing with spending for fiscal year 2011, which we're in the middle of. Then they're going to move on to fiscal year 2012, which starts in October. And then at some point, they're supposedly going to address entitlements, which is another issue big, altogether. Big issue. Uh, and also interesting, Washington Post today, two of the members of the Deck Commission, bipartisan, appointed by the president, sort of up in arms that their recommendations weren't necessarily followed by the president. Very